Hello there, back again. Nice dry day for a change, but um, definitely a temperature drop. It's going to get to about five degrees today, which is um, a big difference from what we've had. Um, that's fine though, it's part and parcel of it. And it's always good if you can snuggle up at night with a hot water bottle or something, some heat source, and a sleeping bag. So, yes, it's good to be back. I've just got here really, lit my, my clay oven up, made a cup of coffee, and we're just about there at the moment. The clay oven is holding out. I eventually finished. Or near enough anyway but um, yeah I made a if you remember a couple of episodes ago or so I um, planned this out on a piece of wood um, and then said I was going to finish it it took a lot longer than I expected mainly because I was doing a lot of other things as well but this is one hell of a tough piece of wood um, and the sandpapering of it I, I gave you estimations on the video that I made. Um, they were way, way off. Um, this actually took quite a few days to sandpaper this into shape. Um, obviously not continuous effort, but having a few goes at it kind of thing. It took a lot longer than I expected. But we've got this very aged oak look about it. I'm very happy with this. Um, that's had no treatment at all yet, and I'm thinking, do I need to treat it? It's so solid and smooth. Um, I suppose I do need to treat it to prolong its life. But I think that would last a long time, even without any uh, linseed oils and varnishes and things. I just love the feel of it at the moment. It's just a beautiful piece of wood. So yeah, finished that. Um, the oven, I've just started her up. Um, made a cup of tea. Cheers. And yeah, it's drying out because we had one hell of a lot of rain. Um, I can't imagine how much, but this whole place has just been really bogged down until today for the last few days or so. Um, so it got very wet, my oven. So there it is. Um, it's held out well. The rain give it a battering. It started to become a little bit clay substance on the outside because I have given it a second coat of clay now um, it's just to smooth it off a little bit I'll give it another coat of clay um, and eventually that'll be a nice smooth surface on there um, it's not too far out as it is and also that any little cracks that pop up um, eventually I guess you're just going to end up with quite a large oven <laughs> and the insides fall to pieces eventually I don't know but yeah and we've got the chimney going which is still do a fantastic job there's no smoke coming off this fire at the moment all there is is steam from the actual clay um, and it's pure heat coming out the top as you can see there's just no smoke because this has got going, once it's got going, after half an hour, an hour, um, then it produces a nice jet flame and burns very efficiently inside there. Um, after about two hours, the clay oven itself will heat up to a radiator standard. Um, and because it's quite thick, the walls in there, it really does produce quite a lot of heat to the surrounding area. 
which is a great benefit for the clay. Big thumbs up the clay. As I say, locally sourced, just grabbed a bit by the beach. It was just going to get washed out. And uh, with no other treatment or refinement, just bunged it together. So very happy with that. That has, well hopefully tonight that I'm going to notice the difference with this because I'm going to close the canopy off a little bit. Um, so that will cut the wind out and hopefully it will just be me and this stove and a little doorway. And the, the heat will build up in here from the radiator values of this oven. I'm hoping. Because otherwise it's going to be a bit blooming cold. So I'll probably give you an update on that. Um, the weather. And if it's hit with extremes. Um, yeah, still got this big chunk of wood here. Don't quite know what to do with. At the moment it's just acting as a windbreak really. Trying to keep the, the heat in towards this area. As you can see it's got a nice heart in there already. I could leave that for probably 30-40 minutes or so at the moment and come back and sprinkle a little bit of sugar on it or something and that would come straight back to life again. Um, obviously the longer it burns the longer I'll be able to leave it but at the moment I'd be alright for 30 minutes I think and a sprinkle of sugar. Or uh, pine needles, whatever. Uh, they all work the same, just sharp, short sharp combustibles um, which just get going with hardly any And that will stir it back to life. My wood isn't dry, it's dryish. I have some dry wood, but I have some wet wood. Uh, or damp wood, I should say. It's not wet wood, it's not fresh. It's uh, always dead wood I use. Because otherwise, you just get loads of crackles and pops when you use fresh wood or wood that isn't ready to burn. Crackles and pops, well, they kind of do your head in after a while of camping and having fires. And the other downside is they can shoot out tiny little embers and make a little tea bag effect on your tarp on the side here. So I'll just avoid hurting trees, really. It uh, will benefit you. If at any point the flames go out in there, which they kind of have at the moment because it's producing quite a bit of smoke there, then a quick blast on my trusty fan soon solves that. I know not everyone's got one of these, but I really do recommend them. Can of course increase the temperature of this oven with this fan by having it fan assisted. It's much like um, well, you're not using coals, I guess, but still you could increase the temperature in there dramatically. Possibly even double it by adding air via a fan. So the the plan is now I've got this oven. I can make better pottery because this is now effectively a clay oven, um, which is a kiln. So <laughs> I could make myself a, a really small oven inside of there and that would be a really good quality oven because it would be done in a kiln. <laughs> so that obviously isn't practical. You get what I mean. But I am going to make, today on the agenda, is um, some clay moulds. And then use those moulds 
in conjunction with polymorph plastics because I do like to mix up the traditional and modern techniques and because um, this clay is locally sourced I know from history that um, this has been used um, over centuries, millenniums, God knows how many hundreds of thousands of years we've been using this clay. Um, unfortunately all the evidence of that has been washed out to see where we are locally. Because after the Ice Age, great lumps were deposited on the coastlines um, of clay and sands and rocks and things. But oh, there's a lot of clay and chalk. Um, then as the ice melted more, the seas rose. Probably took a lot of people by surprise there's a lot of flat lands out at sea where we were. Um, apparently we stretched right across to Norway as a land bridge. But the, um, the waters rose and because it was very flat, it got taken out very quickly. Not overnight, but it would have took a lot of people unawares. The charging incoming of the sea at that point in history. But that gives you a rough idea. So people out at the sea have been doing this kind of thing, using these kind of materials, I think, for a hundred thousand years. Yeah, yeah, that's just a wild guess. Okay, there's crazy numbers, aren't they? But then, as soon as we got fire, I, th I think that we would have soon worked out the clay oven thing, because it, you know, it wouldn't take much. Once you've got the fire sussed, you know, that's the tricky bit, isn't it? You would soon build uh, something around it out of various materials just by trial and error, really, wouldn't you? And I think you'd soon come across clay as beneficial for an oven. But I think, so if you say that um, a bit of local history for this area, um, especially is the east side of uh, the UK, it, um, 200,000 years ago, roughly, it was the huge ice age, wasn't it, um, that melted. And as it melted, it deposited huge chunks of clay in this area. Um, there was already a foundation of chalk, but also lots of clay was dumped, sand, stone, grit, um, as the ice thawed, formed a new land um, which basically stretched from the east side, Norfolk, say, across to Norway. Um, and this was inhabited by lots of early tribes of people. Um, certainly for a hundred thousand years or so, I would think. But, um, that chunk of land unfortunately got washed out to sea very quickly because it was like the flatlands we have an area called the fens quite close here and if the water ever got up into the fens from the sea then that would wipe out a huge piece of land very quickly um, not quite overnight but not far out and this is believed to have happened off the coast in our area a massive amount of land that was reclaimed by the sea, the ice melted, raising the, the sea levels, taking that bridge to Norway and a lot of the people, the marshlands people, that would have lived and thrived off of the marsh, which is what that would have been at the time. And so yeah, uh, that's a bit of the history of this area and this clay and how bloomin' old it might be, this method. I think we're talking many, many tens of or even hundreds of thousands of years. And I sit beside it and it, you can kind of understand why that would be a popular choice. very efficient. I know this because we fairly recently found a mammoth 
nearby in the cliffs, um, in the clay cliffs. And that obviously pinpoints a lot of things. The fact that mammoths were here, the fact that um, as the ice melted, the mammoths were getting stuck in boggy ground, in clay deposits, getting pushed further inland. So that would suggest, that would add to my theory that, um, yeah, we've been around for a long time, much longer than people often suggest. So there's a, quite a lot of options of where I can go with this now, I think. I've just had a little think about it and um, really you've got to try and control the temperature of what's coming out the top here. You can do that with wood, obviously, but just using an empty can with a bit of clay at the bottom there, which I've used for other things, um, it works as a little bit of insulation. You can just pop that on the top there, then put whatever you need, whatever you need to actually cook slowly on here. This has taken a long time to get warm. Obviously we're going to have a lot more smoke coming out of the door because we've blocked it off. But that is a possibility, you know, I could even just heat water up in this tin I think. It wouldn't take that long. I can feel it's it's getting warm now, so we'll take that off quickly. Um, but yeah, that clay at the bottom there is probably going to help with the heat spreading it a little bit. I don't know. It's going to help with something, I'm sure. Um, not all things you think about are sort of genius. They're just kind of accidents. But, but there you go. A couple of hobo stoves that I've messed around with in the past. If you add the fan to these, these really do actually kick it out. Superb jet flame, like no other really. Um, as you can see, this is what I ended up with uh, in the end making. It used to have a bottom on it when it was a hobo stove, um, which would get very hot. But the main airflow through the bottom and lots of air to come out and cook around um, and you could fuel just enough you could put just enough wood inside there to boil up a cup of tea and you wouldn't need to add anything or do anything else it's just as long as you picked the wood didn't use any little tiny twigs and things like that um, maybe even a little bit of fat would just kick it off and keep it lingering a bit. But yeah, that worked well as a hobo stove on its own. Um, so then I made a smaller version. This is a pea tin, a tin of peas, and this was a tin of beans. The tin of bee peas is a smaller version, and it actually slides in there quite nicely. So now I've got a whole range of options as to controlling the temperature of what's coming out that top there. If I have that open up like that, maybe put a little ledge in there or something. Maybe even just push these sides in. Yeah, and that clips on there. So, and we've got lots of airflow then, lots of, so you're going to get, uh, I don't know, let's find out. Yeah, so it's not working as well for a chimney, but it is diffusing the amount of heat that's coming through at the top end. Um, I guess you'd need to have something running through here just to keep this peat in from collapsing, but that's easily done. And then just have whatever you want up here. It could be a hot plate. That's quite warm. Yeah, that's that's quite nice, actually. That is perfect cooking heat, I would say, if you live here. 
Um, so there's lots of options here. And if that isn't cooking quick enough, if you need to turn the heat up, the fire isn't burning quite so fiercely as it was, then I guess you could, first of all, put your bloody heat proof glove on and then just pop that inside there. Now it's going to be much more of a chimney but obviously we've still got these gaps in the sides here so when you put something on the top there hopefully the flames will come out the side and wrap around the pot and that will be a more More efficient, basically. So, I don't know if this fits. But yeah, you get the idea. It's, um, and that's actually quite stable. Because um, there is a ledge in there that I put in to hold it, the chimney up. And that's worked ever so well so far. So, you could put a fair amount of weight on there. I don't know how much. Um, so you could put your pot of water on there, that's what I'm thinking mainly, because that's generally what you use this stove for, I don't do much cooking. Um, but then you could have a range of options of adjusting this heat, you could stem off the flow of heat through this door. If you close that off, or nearly close it, there's, it's not going to get the oxygen it needs, is it? So that would reduce the actual heat output. So I'm not done with this yet, but I like this as a start, and it's done. It's it's been no effort, which is a bonus. Just old projects, old hobo tins. Um, I could maybe insulate this with clay. maybe use clay to make a more sturdy base up the top here. I could even make a clay plate as a heat plate. Um, nice inch thick piece of clay going across there. You could probably fry your eggs on it or something, I don't know. But I like the options and the possibilities. If you can think of any, a penny for your thoughts as always. Um, I'd say we're done with this, but we're not. This is early days. Early thoughts. And, yeah, things will evolve as they often do. I think it's about five degrees out there. A good indication um, I've found over the, in the past is if you can see your breath. I've always wondered, um, as a child, what kind of temperatures you saw your breath at. Surely it's a vague indication towards what temperatures are kicking around. So I've done a bit of research on that recently, and it can vary. Um, but roughly, it's 7 degrees or lower, if you can see your breath. So I started off today, um, and I've been seeing my breath pretty much all, certainly all evening anyway, with the torches and things. Um, and it's been quite furious, like I'm smoking or something, so I'm guessing it's quite, a, maybe five degrees or something. Uh, but in here, in my tent, with this gorgeous little stove, I can't see my breath anymore. So it's above seven, which... So that's not a great amount, is it? But it's above 7. I, I feel like it's more like 12, 13, maybe even a touch more. Because I, I don't think it's cold in here. It's quite well sealed up. It's just that fire area where there is a gap for the fire to escape and not set fire to everything. Um, but yeah. Just a little update.
have a little look at the stove here. We've got a continuous jet flame now. And the reason why is because of that heart. It's hard to see because I've got a whacking grit log in the way. But that is pure red in there. Um, not ready orange. And it's is glowing. In fact, I would imagine this whole clay thing must be getting very warm by now. I've brought the bricks in to trap the heat in here a little bit more and the, uh, the clay bricks as well. They're all here stacked up here. It's like a little radiator. And I've got as many things as I can around me to try and keep this heat in here. Um, ideally I'd like a little hole coming out of the tent obviously with fireproofing but I think uh, with canvas or not even canvas is it this plastic materials that you get it's not safe to have these fires inside of them. Um, you know, I would only do that with a very thick canvas like one like I used to have. Uh, and a, a proper chimney with the uh, heat resistant material around it. But that said, this open air, it's only open up there. Hard to see. But yeah, there's one of my little signal things up there. That I dot around the, the woods to guide me. Um, I've also solved a bit of a problem that I've had with losing things all the time and that is by putting, which doesn't really work with this does it? Yeah. Anyway um, that glows up just like that white one up there. Be the same as the one outside there which is only a tiny little bit in that little tree up there and when you point your light roughly towards it it shines back at you marvellous stuff for the dark again you can't see it but this is a red version and trust me it lights up red it's just, um, you can pick which colour you like I've got a bit on both sides but other than that it's just a simple solution for me to hopefully find my knife if I drop it in the woods at night. Which um, stranger things have happened at sea. So you put something down because you found something, you're harvesting it at night um, and you just forget that it's on the floor. Or oh, I do. Seems to be a common mistake. And then I have to search for ages. First you've got to find that location roughly where you thought you might have left it but with a headlamp it would be very easy to find that again in the woods as long as you knew roughly where to look I've done the same with my keys and several other important things um, just so that I don't lose them on that note I'm just going to sit back quite early still, I think it's what, 6, 7 o'clock at night, so it could get a lot colder yet. But as it's getting colder, this stove seems to be getting hotter. So maybe it will equalise at some point. And I've always got my trusty hot water bottle if things do get really bad. A lot of the things in the old days, still bloody good today. Hot water bottle. Perfect example. Anyway, that's enough of me yabbering on. I'm going to listen to an audio book or something and just relax by this fire. Maybe have a little whittle with some wood. I've got to make a fork out of oak. That's my next little challenge in carving. So until next time, take care people. 
Hello guys, um, yeah so I found my temperature gauge and it says that it's fifteen in here at the moment. Uh, sixteen even which is a damn sight warmer than out there. It's five out there and 16 I'm happy with. Um, that's really not an issue, 16. So yeah, pleased with this oven and the setup. It's keeping me nice and warm and cozy. Make it be a bit sleepy, but enough and all of that. It's getting quite late now, so this will probably be the last check-in for the evening. But yeah, 15. This is also a compass, by the way, one of those rubbish ones, but it does work. True to form. Had it for quite some years, as you can probably tell. But yeah. Really, just for the temperature gauge more than anything. If I was to put this by that fire where my feet are, that's probably 20, I would guess. And I think if I was to stay in here a bit longer, we might reach a, an air temperature in here of around 20, which is just right. So, as long as I'm in here and I've got the wood, everything's fine. However, I won't be sleeping in here, I will be sleeping in my tent with a sleeping bag and a freshly boiled hot water bowl and also some of these hot rocks or clay bricks in a pan, nice and safe and just gently heating the tent up. Oh, and I also have a little candle with... Um, some menthol crystals in a little um, essential oils burner. Uh, I just find that opens up the airways, um, which is great. Um, I find that's a lot easier to breathe and stuff uh, with a bit of menthol crystals. And maybe the candle takes a little bit of the humidity out of the air and possibly warm it slightly so yeah that's what will happen basically that's my night routine but yeah getting that sleeping bag pretty sharp with a hot water bowl it is key well adios amigos Take care, stay warm. Good morning. Rapidly trying to warm up here. Um, blooming cold last night, although when I got in the sleeping bag. I soon settled in. I went to sleep and slept well until I heard the rain. So here we are. With my stove. Trying to get some of that warmth back that I left in that tent. But along with the rain came a bit of cloud cover, um, which has warmed things up a little bit outside. You can tell almost instantly. Um, last night there was not a cloud in the sky, and it felt like you were in space basically. It was freezing. And I'm thinking it's going to get a lot colder than that yet. Five is reasonable really.
get them to the minuses, things are going to be a lot more tricky. But that said, I think I was able to maintain the heat inside this little canopy using this stove. And it was approaching 20 degrees by the time I left it. It was going steadily up. Um, so, yeah, I, I think this is possible. I think I could camp in minus temperatures. Below freezing. But that said, I guess we'll have to find out. It's not looking like it's going to be that cold for a while yet anyway. Probably January, I wouldn't be surprised. Often a cold month. But it's another challenge.